Over the past few months, I realized that I'm a perfect candidate for an isolation cabinet in my home studio for two primary reasons. One, I live really close to my neighbors. And two, I record in a room that has a window facing a busy street. I need the flexibility to play my tube amps with near full saturation without waking the newborn next door. And I can't afford to scrap takes every time a three alarm fire decides to commit every engine in my entire city to rush past my house. All right, these may seem like wants, but come on, who doesn't use every possible excuse to justify new studio gear? Since I assume most of us with home studios encounter similar challenges, I decided to bring you along for the journey. I've done a lot of research, read a lot of forums, watched a lot of videos, including the ones from Colt Caparoon and Rhett Scholl. I think I have about an 80% solution, but before I invest in purchasing a bunch of material, I want to conduct a proof of concept to at least predict with some fidelity what the final product is going to sound like. Also, if I want to make any changes, it's going to be a lot easier now than further down the road. So the general concept of my design is largely based on Colt Caparoon's video, which is linked down in the description below. The idea here is to have a box within a box decoupled by being completely suspended in air on all sides. I decided to go with this concept because I believe it's gonna be most effective in achieving my two goals of one, allowing a lot of tube saturation with lower external volumes, and two, reducing interference from outside noise. At this point, let me address some potential questions about why I decided to build an ISO cab in the first place, instead of, say, using a signal attenuator or just the DI out on the amp. Life is about balancing time and money. And right now, as with most decisions regarding my studio, I'm deciding to invest a lot more time than money into this project. I'm sacrificing instant gratification for greater control of my recording environment. Also, I plan to integrate some unique features that will increase the capabilities of my compact studio. A quick note about design constraints. I wanted this cabinet to be able to fit through household doors, so the maximum width is gonna be 27 and a quarter inches. I decided to orient the speakers up so I can maximize the area around the mic without increasing the footprint. That being said, I need to figure out how tall this thing is gonna be. I need to take into consideration everything that's going inside the inner box. The speakers, the mic, the mount for the mic, the absorption material, and get an idea of the sound quality. In order to test this, I'm gonna build an isolation cover around one of my speaker cabinets and compare that to just miking the front of the speaker in my room. Not the most scientific test, but it will at least show me the comparative results. Kind of like an impulse response. I know that's a buzzword going around these days. I wanna identify the results that this system has on a signal. And hopefully I can create my own IRs, patches, and models once this rig is done. All right, let me see if I can create this cover in 6.8. If you think these hands are cracked from working in my garage, they're not. It's from these heavy gauge strings. Here's the completed cover, and this is how I'm connecting it to my cabinet. Let's hear what it sounds like as I alternate between these recordings. Overall, I'm happy with the results. Need some tweaking, but I think it shows a lot of potential. 
Actually, for about $15 worth of material and about an hour of work, I think it's an outstanding value for results decent enough to just jam out in your home. The final product will definitely need to sound more professional though. The volume reduction was surprisingly significant, definitely less than half the original volume. I think adding the weather stripping helped create a good seal along the edges. For those that want to know, this cover is 12 inches deep and housed the SM57 mic just fine, and the sound quality was decent. For the absorption material, I used Roxel Safe and Sound Insulation. While the final product will have more width than this cover, I'll probably increase the depth a little bit to allow space for a second mic. At least give me the option for adding a second mic later on down the road. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that I plan to have two speakers in this cab, with baffling in the middle of course, in order to allow more options for speaker selection while still maintaining the proper wattage for a particular amp head. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for letting me talk through this with you. If you feel like you may have a valuable contribution, I'd love to hear it. I'm not an expert, and I'm sure there are things that I should be considering, but I'm not. Thanks to all those who posted their own projects, and hopefully there's some added value in this video. If you did find value, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to follow this and other projects in my home studio. Thanks for watching.